fall of Singapore, its significance, and who is to blame. In terms of significance, we find that the, the question about how can we defend Singapore is as important today as it was in 1941. How can we defend this island if the opponent that we're fighting against has the Malay Peninsula? That was the quandary that the British had by the late 1930s. They knew that an opponent would most likely land on the Thai beaches to the north and then come down through the northern states of Malaya. So overall, when we see this uh, you know, dilemma, there's uh, usually two aspects to the problem. One is, what strategy can we devise to basically keep Singapore um, well defended against this? So who's in charge of strategy? And then the question also in terms of tactics as well. Who's in charge of tactics? The ultimate uh, uh, decider is the battles that are fought on the Malay Peninsula. So you have this differentiation between strategy and tactics. Strategy was in chart what was taken care of by the Prime Minister of Britain, Winston Churchill at that time. He was the one that uh, would decide you know, where the necessary tanks and planes uh, to defend Singapore would be allocated. Um, not many were allocated to Singapore. It was, it was under-defended under in terms of these war machines. So he sent them to the Middle East, which was an active theatre, uh, at, at a turning point, and then of course he sent them to the ally Russia uh, to help uh, them fight the Germans, which of course was an active front and a crucial at a crucial point of um, the the battles. So Singapore wasn't an active front in 1941, so Singapore did not get much at all. Actually, the estimate for planes was you know, perhaps you know, over 500 were needed, uh, and then another estimate was over 300. Uh, in, in actual fact, uh, they, they had only 158 when hostilities began, and most of them were obsolete. There were no tanks at all. So strategically, this is the hand that Percival, the overall uh, general officer commanding, uh, in charge of the battles and the tactics, uh, was handed. Okay. So how did he go in terms of the tactics? So what he did, essentially, was disperse his forces, uh, defending airfields, uh, lack of concentration of forces that at major points that could be defended. His defensive tactics were very defensive, of course. Uh, he had fixed lines of defense. Uh, he had no uh, plans for any kind of aggressive counterattack against an aggressive enemy, the Japanese. So the, the tactics he was using on the battlefield uh, were not the best in terms of uh, those he could have employed. So various historians look at these different aspects of the question and they come up with different answers. If you look at strategy, you tend to blame Winston Churchill a great deal, like Hong Chit Chong does in his book on Operation Matador. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the tactics, you'll tend to blame Percival a fair bit, like Alan Warren does in his book. So different historians will look at different aspects. There are other schools of thought about who is to blame as well, uh, and these are taken up by historians who look at, say, the naval base theory, look at the intelligence theory, look at various other aspects of the whole um, argument uh, that uh, history presents itself. So this is the significance of the fall of Singapore in terms of um, the way we look at it.